Hi oh guys, hope you can see me right. Just on the phone. I've just come down to Dungeness because for years I've been over here photographing the boats and things like that. And uh, you've got the old little railway line that basically they push carts along to uh, move the fish to obviously vehicles to move away back to go and sell. Um, I don't know if you can hear me at all, but um, there used to be a boat down here that has been set on fire um, a little while ago now. Um, just for fun, some idiot decided to just destroy the boat, which is a real shame. There was lots of stuff here that just degraded over the time, like this here, a part of one of the carts that used to glide along the railway. Um, so it's just unnecessary. Um, basically got the 100 to 400 and the two times converter on at the minute. So I thought I would do some sort of side-by-side -side tests just to show the difference between with the converter and no converter. Just a bit of interest really. But it's a beautiful day. It's 27 degrees Celsius still. But the breeze is lovely so hopefully. Still get some cool shots and not too hindered by the heat. So I'm just gonna show you around a little bit. Near the distance there you've got the two lighthouses, you've got the nuclear power station, and then just random boats and debris, old boats, old just bits and pieces of old drying sheds where they used to dry the old nets and things like that. Um, old fishermen's houses which are now not necessarily fishermen's houses. Like that. It's a bit of a strange place, really. Um, there's a lifeboat down there. I wonder if it's going to go out. So this, this is an old, one of the old nets, net drying. Sorry about the wind, by the way. This is one of the old nets drying sheds. There's still some old nets here as well. Though. Actually, I don't know if it's collapsed or if it was helped by people. Uh, yeah, not really sure. As you can see, just things just it's rubbish really. I mean it is just literally pollution, but these had a kind of like an iconic status because they've just been left, you know, from years ago. So here's the old boat. I've seen some pictures of this on fire, someone, or had been on fire. Um, it's just stupidity, it's just like, why, what, what, you know, I don't understand why, even though I know it was just in decay and kind of destroyed anyway, but it was a nice thing to look at, you know. I mean, you appreciate, you know, textures of old wood that have been shaped and, you know, this boat had a a bit of a life and everything, you know, it obviously done a job, but at the same time, it had uh, served a purpose, obviously. It's just crazy. It's just a shame. I've got pictures, so I wish I'll put in the video if I can find some, uh, of this boat still standing, actually quite a long time ago when it still had its, uh, Call it where the pilot would be, or the, the captain of the little ship would have been, would have sat the cabin, I suppose, but with the window and everything. And then it had fallen, fallen down and in, it would have you know, rotted. It's just a shame because this was a stunning, stunning thing. So, anyway, let's try and get a picture of this and make it look interesting. The sun's right there going down, so we might really get an interesting look. Blue sea out there. There's a random tractor which looks quite cool with the blue sea behind it. You can see that from here. Um, long 
grass is this old boat here with the um, lighthouses behind. Just looks quite nice with the long grass and the way the sun's back over here. It's pretty cool. So, anyway, let's take some photos, see what we can capture. And let's have a look at how sharp these images are on the two times converter. I know people. I've seen it recently so much people slagging off the two times converter saying what's the point of it, blah blah blah. It's expensive, it gives you soft images. It doesn't. You know, people are obsessed with sharpness. Um, let's let's see how sharp it really is. So the pictures I will put up, I won't process at all, I won't add any sharpening. They'll be straight out of the camera. Uh, converted to a JPEG so I can use them. Um, but other than that, from raw, no sharpening applied. And see how they look. So, about 100 odd metres away, 150 metres away, you can see the sign there. So I've just taken a shot of it at 800 millimetres. Um, still a lot of heat distortion in the air, so can't rely on it too much. But looking at stuff a lot closer, it's still impressive. It's still impressive. So as you can see here, 100 millimetres, the sign is quite a distance away, obviously zoomed in a bit from natural eyesight. That's at 400 mil. You can see that it's pretty clear, but there is a lot of heat haze and it's very noticeable when you put the two times converter on at 800 mil. You can actually see the sign writing is still legible, obviously you can still read it. But as we look closer, that's at 400 cropped in. It's, yeah, not, not sharp sharp. But it's still clear enough to read quite clearly, and obviously that's a, a very big cropping. So, you know, for general imagery, it's absolutely fine. But you can see the haziness around the sign, the actual uh, writing of the thing isn't clear in a lot of spots, but then in a couple of spots it's really sharp. Uh, same again here with the um, the, the uh, grasses here that, you know, they're relatively sharp. Obviously the background's designed, was aimed to be out of focus, uh, just to make the grass is the subject as such but actually really to make the boat interesting because it's out of focus to try and make you look at it so that worked quite well here's 800 mil uh with the a piece of wood i found uh that was cropped in this is the full image and it's pretty sharp I, i'm pretty impressed with how that works and this is at 400 cropped in mainly with the at 400 without the, t the um, teleconverter on you just get a lot more light so instead of being at f11 with the eight, uh, the two times converter on 800 mil you've got the f5.6 with the 400 so that's where your real benefits are sharpness wise it's not not exactly unusable looking at older teleconverters years ago yeah um, and i think that's what a lot of people have got in their mind still is from the old days where optics weren't particularly um, well polished as such or the, you know it's not quite up to what today's standards are I think that's where there is still the sceptical thing saying that teleconverters are rubbish and in the real world they're not um, they do suffer from long range distortion but that's down mostly down to the air distortion heat middle of summer at the moment you know you are going to get some heat haze um, showing up in the images you know sort of 50 meters upwards you know it's going to be difficult to get a really really sharp shot where, you know, these shots here look absolutely fine. Um, the brighter one here is 100, 100 millimeters, sorry, um, without the TC on. Uh, this shot here, just to show you the distortion going on, you can you can read the RNLI bit, but if you try and read the the name on the orange part of the uh, the cabin there, it's hardly, hardly legible. It's very, very out of focus, and that's literally just heat distortion. So that was with 800 mil and cropped in. So that's that's where it becomes very very difficult. Uh, tractor here, this is at 800 millimeters, cropped in very slightly, uh, and it looks okay. Um, you start zooming in big time, and yeah, it does look slightly soft, but that's just down to the heat haze again. It's just the distance. Uh, and then when you look at um, a 400 mil version with it cropped in basically like this you can see it's a lot brighter um, and that is literally down to obviously having an f5.6 aperture compared to an f11 which is obviously what you are uh, limited to when you have the, the uh, two times converter on if you're wider say 200 millimeters you've got f9 
um, but obviously up to f11. Here is one shot. Um, this one is at 400 millimeters, just a stone, uh, with no no teleconverter but, uh, on at all. So nice and sharp. Um, I just want to have a sort of a bit of a you know closer closer look. And here is the uh, 800 millimeters uh, f11, and you know still very very sharp. It's not hugely different. A lot of people say there's about 15% difference in uh, having a two times converter on. They're probably right, but in the real world, you know, that's what we're looking at here is, you know, the fact that it it's not making a huge huge difference in sharpness generally. It's it's still it's still very usable, and I think we're you know I've said it before. Everyone's very obsessed with how sharp how sharp things are nowadays, and you know it's a case of zooming into a hundred percent and this and the other. Um, this shot here is at 400 millimeters, and that crow or raven or whatever was basically dropping shells to break them. That's obviously its perch point. And that's at 800 millimeters with no cropping. So it really does help you get a bit more reach. And from that distance, it was quite cool. But then as soon as the sun went in or got behind a cloud, uh, my light went. And obviously, I don't have the f5.6, I've got f11. So I either have to crank up the ISO, uh, as you can see here on video. It's also accentuated, even though stabilization is on, you're doubling obviously your magnification. And you can see there I'm moving around all over the place, even though stabilization's on. My angle of view is accentuated, so the smallest amount of movements really show up. As you can see there, the sun was going down, it's behind those clouds, little clouds there, it kept sort of coming and going. So at 800 mil, I was a little bit limited on light and obviously shutter speeds and stuff. But as you can see here, that wheel there, the cogged wheel, and uh, this is the old railway line there, there was these little birds. Um, one was actually perched there, and I'll get a shot of it in a moment. Um, but, yeah, I'm not sure what they were, but they actually allowed me to get quite close before they disappeared. I'm very, ha very happy that I actually had on the two times converter for this little bit here, because it allowed me to get closer to them. And they were only about the size of a sparrow, slightly bigger maybe, um, so quite a small bird. But it really did allow me to get some nice shots. So as you can see here, it's sitting on an old engine, um, which just made an interesting subject actually. Um, and there was a pair of them; they were just chirping at each other. Obviously concerned that I was there, but didn't really go anywhere. They they actually got one got actually a bit closer, just obviously to have a bit of a a check out to see what I felt. I think they actually nest down in the grasses and stuff. I'm not sure exactly, but they disappeared down into the grasses. Um, and very well, very quiet. I don't know if it's just hiding or if they do actually nest down there. Here we go. He, this is where he jumped onto the little railway line and was very close to me. So managed to get some really quite cool shots of him quickly. Uh, auto focus with the two times on. It doesn't seem to be an issue, uh, not at all. You know, it's it's auto focusing video quite happily. Yeah, it locked onto a bit of grass once or twice. Um, but these shots I actually really like, and I think with the two times convert actually gives you a slightly different look um, in general um, and for shots like this it just kind of made it nicer in some respects um, just gave it a nice look the light was really lovely because obviously the sun was going down and there's a little bit of haziness and a little bit of cloud cover as well so as you can see here cropped in heavily um, yeah you can see a little bit of noise in the background but that's where I crank the ISO up to get the shutter speeds uh, cyclist going past uh, just cr quickly snap that as they went through. Um, they were a good 200 odd meters away. Here's one of the uh, the bird shots, the one that was on the um, railway line there, and it's sharp. I mean that's 800 millimeters and heavily cropped in. Um, you know, obviously with the full image, um, it gave me a lot more scope to actually be able to crop in a little bit um, or not. You know, um, the details all there. Um, maybe it would be a bit sharper with the 400 mil. But, you know, allow me to get straight in there. That's the full image and, and get the shot. No problems with the autofocus. I auto focusing on the bird's eye. No drama whatsoever. So that worked really, really nicely. I like to give everyone just the real world views, really. I'm not being scientific about this. Um, you know, it's up to you if you want to use a teleconverter. Uh, for me, it's a very handy thing to, ha to have. It gives me things like this. I can get closer to the sun with no issues. Um, like I say, the autofocus works still very, very well. I've used the two times converter on the 100 or 400 G Master, which these shots are shot on. This is just my tyre on my car. 
Um, but also the uh, the 200 to 600 as well works pretty well. Uh, nowhere near as good on the autofocus, but that's kind of expected, especially on the A7R4. But if you've got an A1 or something like that, your autofocus system will work much better. Um, but still, nice and sharp, 800 millimeters, um, even with the cropped in one. And then looking out to sea, the boat would actually come a lot closer. And I've actually got a little bit of video of that. But you, as you can see here, at 400 millimeters, um, even at Super 35, so I think that's 560 or something, um, I'm quite a lot steadier. Um, with the movement, until obviously I'm moving around there just on purpose, just to show you the fact that stabilization is pretty good. Uh, but when I put the two times converter on, and even though the boat was closer, anyway, naturally you'll see how much more movement there is. Uh, me trying to hold it still, just because the accentuation of that lens is obviously 800. So the smallest bit of movement, even with stabilization on, really does make a difference. Someone doing some kind of interview or thing, it's probably about the um, immigrants that are coming across because they, they like to land on this beach quite a bit. Um, but, yeah, as you can see there, 800 mil, it's quite all over the place. Um, just by, you know, extra movements. It was very windy as well, the, the breeze had got a bit stronger. Um, so, you know, it, obviously that was a bit of buffeting going on. Uh, is that cyclist again going past in the... Uh, the sun behind it, backlit, which worked quite nicely in the uh, things there. The um, the old boat there, which is a real shame it's been ruined like that. It's a little bit annoying. Um, here's a couple of shots here. So this one was at 400 millimeters, and this one is at 800 millimeters. The color change is probably due to the sun light changing behind a cloud or whatever, so the white balance changed slightly. This is at 200 millimeters, and this is at 800 millimeters. So it's still sharp enough for a lot of situations. I'm not going to say it's perfect in all situations, uh, but for me, I think it was a really good buy. I know it was 500 quid for the actual Catalogo motor, so it's not exactly cheap. Um, but I do think that, uh, you know, if you can afford to have one, I think they are coming quite handy. When I had the 200 or 600, for example, that's a big lens, and it kind of made me think about taking that lens out for the day. If I could get away with not taking that lens, I wouldn't because it would literally fill my bag up. And that's where the hassle became a bit more like, do I bother taking it? I'll just take the RX-10 Mark IV instead because it's an all-in-one. I've got 600 mil. With this 100 or 400, it fits in the bag really nicely. It's lighter. Uh, I can stick a two times converter on it and I've got 800 millimeters. And especially for the small birds and stuff like that, it's actually really, really helpful for myself. And it's only my opinion. Um, you know, it works very well for myself. So. Um, that's what I think. Like I say, it's not perfect in all situations, and you know sometimes cropping in can give you a better result, especially if you've got the A7R4 or the A7R3 or something like that, where you can use the cropping ability a little bit. But if you've got a true 800 mil, it's actually quite handy in some respects. So, anyway, guys, let me know what you think. Um, leave a comment below. Don't forget to click the subscribe button and a little notification bell, and I'll see you soon.